one is right here. We gon' give them what they came for. We gon' take it up from last year. Shoot them a shot, boy, I'm long range. Me and the team on the same plane. Stay down, never switched up. The only thing changed was the game. I'm in the zone now. The only thing changed was the game. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Class of Media Roundtable. We got Amy. We got Charlie. We got Scott. We all here. We here. What's going on? What's up, Holly? Corey? What's up? Um, first things first. Are we, are we still fighting? Yep. 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 We are. Oh, you said that quick. Uh-huh. We even discussed it today that we will be fighting until... He gets a face tattoo. And she becomes skinny. And I become skinny. <laughs> it, he is taunting yeah. me so bad that yesterday I was jumping rope. He was done with his class. I was jumping rope and he's going, oh, oh, the ground, is, the ground is shaking. Rough. Good. So It's rough out here in these streets. But that's is, okay is it, because is it the tough love you wanted, or do you are you really upset? Me? Yep. Listen, I told him it's gonna motivate me. It's gonna motivate me because I love to show him wrong. I told him already I feel skinny and <laughs> it's just gonna be no time. <laughs> how how was the uh week in the woods? It was amazing. Uh Amazing. It was uh, a little bit scary though, because these were like actual cliffs that um, one <laughs> to listen to the name of this one trail because it's funny. But the real trail was called <laughs> Pinch 'em Tight. <laughs> and I was like, is it Pinch 'em Tight because we're like squeezing our uh, cheeks together? Because literally it was cliff on the side, cliff on the side. And I, I felt comfortable but like every once in a while scott would like go look over the scenery and i was like absolutely not absolutely not stay here we're not doing that but the trails it was nothing like ohio hiking it was like actual hiking and lots of scenery so it was great have you ever hiked at mohican uh, yeah so there's a cliff on like one side but you have the other side that's pretty like wide yeah, and even where we stayed, we stayed in, it's essentially like a tiny home is really what it was. Um, but the views were amazing and they had this great outdoor area to it with, you know, tons of space. But then there's a 50 foot cliff over and like, there's no way I could ever stay there. Like if I had small children or, you know, like, and we brought Murph, but I kept him on the leash like the whole time. Like I wouldn't trust him to <laughs> go explore because it just made me super nervous but it was really cool so not for sleepwalkers absolutely not or like i was even thinking about like what if somebody had too much to drink and was just out here stumbling around it scares the crap out of me what would make you think about someone who drinks too much i was talking about people who would sit by a fire like by the fire pit which was out there and that's what people generally do around a fire pit i know i've witnessed yeah. you do it quite yeah. often <laughs> So you, you live what, in at. what, Charlie? Usually they make s'mores. Yeah, some people make s'mores. Other people have have a couple of brewskis. Listen to a couple, a lot of Grateful Dead, and you know, yeah, yeah, fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, before we get into serious stuff, before right before we went on the air, I saw Ariel Lowen do this. Apparently, it's a new TikTok trend. Yeah, I just saw right? that, and I made this clip like before I saw that for the wad zombie show and then wad zombie and his family all got sick so we had to postpone mm. that show but i want to show the clip and i and i titled it like from the news of what the hell is that you ever have a special um, guest on the show because i may pop up <laughs> is charlie's asking if he can be a special guest on that show sure i'll just appear place <laughs> It's like Mortal Kombat characters. Um. <laughs> oh. 
my big question is, and I slow it down here in a second, is what is going on with the hip action <laughs> on Thor? Mm. Like I think he's he got, got good really, hip action. He got really into that. It's yeah. Mobile. Some mobile hips right there. Yeah. He's feeling it. I that's, like it. That's six foot eight, 400 pounds of hip action. I don't like the joke. I Okay. I, the person in me doesn't like this joking around, pretend to hit your Talk spouse kind of thing. That's just me. Yeah. Well, Ariel hits herself. Yeah. I see. Right. She split screens it. Yep. I saw that. That's what I mean. Like that feels better to me. And I understand. I can, and I, I can take a joke. Like I can see an intent and all that, but I, still, it's still a little bit bothersome to me. Just to say. Yeah. Mm. Well, I thought the funny part was his hip action, not the, okay. The trend. Yeah. Oh, but it okay. definitely is mortal combat. Yeah. I mean, can you like seeing that live six foot eight, 400 pounds of all that hips, like dancing with the stars. Wouldn't that be like awesome? And she's like partner. Yeah, she is tiny. Is she though, or is she just not him? No, she's tiny. Yeah, she's the opposite of me. I mean, she's short, tiny. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. She's not four C's. Thick. Thick. So did everybody work out today? Yep. I guess I you did can... twice. Oh, yeah. What did you twice. do the second time? Sorry. And then you can tell yeah. us what, what you Day did. two of power abs. That's right. And let me tell you something. It's different. It's <laughs> different than day one. <laughs> day one, I got down to a science. Day two. <laughs> this Carrie Pierce knows what she's doing. Just wait till day three, dude. Shit. So what, wow. seriously, what was your second workout? You had a barbell that has nothing to do with abs. On, on what? Oh, I did a, I did a, um, I saw Josh Bridges do this. <laughs> did an imam of back squats. You do five every minute for ten minutes. Then each week, each week you go up ten percent. Okay. So we'll see what happens. I gotta get in that, that crease. Gotta get that depth. Hey, you've been getting the depth. That's what I'm working on. The front rack is also what we we going to work on. Well, you know, one thing at a time. Well, you know, our, our listener, Jay Birch, he is a big Josh Bridges guy, has done the pay the man hmm. weekends or whatever with him. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Ooh. And he's asking, you know what, Jeffrey? Do? Let me it's ask fun. you this. Is there, a seven, is there a seven-day free trial? Because if so, Charlie's about to sign up. I don't need a seven-day. I still <laughs> sign up. He just needs to. <laughs> It'll just go with the the uh, graveyard collection <laughs> of Richard Simmons, Carrie Pierce. Tybo. Tia Toomey. Tia Toomey. Uh, yeah, Tia Toomey. Um, Billy Blanks. Steel. Tony Horton. Yeah. He's got them all. Jazzer size, but did you just see him post it on Instagram or where did you get the idea? I guess, yes, it was uh on Instagram. Okay, it's true. I am, I, I have thought about paying a man. <laughs> <laughs> he looks better than he's ever looked. From I don't know phase on. to action phase. I don't know if he's on some science or what's happening. He looks fantastic. Well, he's married now. What well, does that, got, that Maybe that he look better? Could be. What's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying maybe he's so happy and he's wanting to look good for his woman. Oh, yeah, that seems normal. You know, he's a newlywed. That seems mm -hmm. normal for a newlywed. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense then. Yeah. So Polaris was crazy because, so I, I didn't go today, but I came in yesterday and it's been squat on Monday, uh -huh. squat and then short wad. Well, we finished the strength cycle. So now it's 
well, we don't want to focus. We want to get you off the barbell. And it was like this big, long 30 minute workout. I like those. Uh, actually, it's probably better for me right now, but it was like 50 calorie row, 40 of this, 30 that, 20, 10, then back up. Yeah, you need that. You need to. Our, work, our workout was essentially in different variations of, but a t total reps here 30 power cleans at 125, 185, 60 burpees, and then a bunch of cows on the bike. Burpees over bar. Burpees over bar. Sorry. Sorry. With a two foot takeoff this time, not this other shuffle standard. Two foot takeoff. Yeah. Did, did your gym do the two-foot takeoff, or was it in the programming? It was in the programming, and I held us to the programming. So, uh, Jaybird says his newest program is Operation LFG, which mixes some isolation work with CrossFit, which I think you've mm. actually kind of been looking for, haven't you, Charlie? Um, of course. It does sound like my alley. Might be signing up tomorrow. Little bodybuilding, little. Mm. Mm. So now, do I do that or Ibex? Let's see. We're now we're on the. Josh is my guy, so yeah. I mean, and I just told you about Nate uh, signing up for Proven. So. I've been down that road. Oh, you've been down that one. I've been down okay. the Proven, Proven road. Nate, your son. Yeah. Well, he came. With, yes, he came with me to the workout the other day or Ooh. to the gym the other day and there was nothing programmed. And so he was like, well, it was open gym. And he's like, I just, I'll just sign up for this free trial to get a workout. And I was like, Oh, you should let Charlie know. Cause he likes to start day one. Yeah. I do like Barbara. I do like Barbara too. You didn't say she did Barbara. Remind me what that is. Five rounds of it's got sit-ups, pull-ups, push-ups, push-ups, and air squats, air squats yeah. yeah. It's like five rounds and you do it in like. It's kind of like Cindy, but. But I think it's like rest. Like you, I think you do round. It's like 30, 40, 50, 60. And then you get a three minute rest or something between the next round. It's a lot. It is a lot. It's high volume for sure. It sounds like one of those prison workouts. Yeah, yep. yeah that's why I like it. Yeah. So did you guys see uh, the DB documentary? I did. I thought it was very well done. I thought it oh. was was very, um, like, I mean, it was it was touching. I think you know, in a way, I think it was um, very um, emotive, and it was um, emotive. Well, just you know, like it. It showed a lot of like grit, you know, like in her background story that I thought was was fascinating to watch and be a part of, you know, along the journey of it. So, Charlie, did you get past the first two minutes? No, I kept rewinding. I didn't. I don't know. Something was wrong with my computer. Just yeah. kept looping. Mm, yeah, must be that virus you got on there. Like me. <laughs> Day ones. <laughs> yeah, I um, I really look at it as two different documentaries. the The childhood growing up, I thought, was a ten out of ten. Uh huh. I think the CrossFit stuff. I have some issues, but I said those Thursday night. I, Cooper Marsh is my friend, but he I don't think he came across well in this documentary. You mean by, based on what he said about what happened with underdogs? That that he kind of said that he flipped Danielle off to tell her to do that to the crowd. Oh. He always talked about how many views and likes she has. Like, And I, I get that's one of the things that he has to look at, but I just don't think – and I like the guy. Like, We've had him on a couple times. I talk to him all the time. He's been nothing but kind to us. Um, I just don't think he came across well in the documentary. And I really didn't like the way he treated the underdog situation in the documentary. 
Um, do you think that that is in part because also of your um, friendship relationship with underdogs? I said that Thursday night. That, okay. You know, that Justin and I are good friends and that, that I probably do have a slant in that direction. Um, and I guess like I had high hopes because when Danielle was on with Lauren doing the, the interview before the documentary, mm -hmm. talking about it, she talked very glowingly about her time with Justin. Mm -hmm. And it actually, when she got to other coaches, she kept telling them, well, you don't do it like Kotler did it. You don't, like, I want it like Kotler did it, or Kotler really cared about me. You don't seem to care about me like he did. Mm -hmm. And then she said, well, I realized that, like, nobody's going to care about me like he did because well, that's just who he is. I think one of the coaches might. I think in a very different way. <laughs> in a very different way. Allegedly. But, and so someone actually commented on the Thursday night show in the comments and said they disagreed with me on the Kotler take and everything like that. Justin actually came in and responded. Oh. And then Justin and I started texting. And with that, we're having Justin on this Thursday mm -hmm. to talk about the situation. So I, 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 I think I just want reconciliation. And I felt like in that interview with Lauren, Danielle was coming in that direction. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in the documentary, Cooper just threw gas on the fire. So it sounds like you might need to talk to Coop. Maybe. Or, or Danielle. There you go. Yeah. But that's, those are my, I, I still thought like that part was probably a seven out of 10. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but I just know that it's going to be whatever story they want to tell for the CrossFit stuff. Right. I mean, that's just what a documentary is. Of course it is. Whoever does a documentary is going to, it's their point of view. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, I, I thought it was well done. It was, you know, some people complain about the timing. I thought it was perfect. There's nothing going on right now. Yeah. Oh, if yeah. CrossFit content, like, it was the perfect time to put it out. Mm -hmm. I mean, for this show, I was struggling to find stuff to talk about. In the CrossFit space, so it was a, it was a perfect time. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. No, I mean, I did. I mean, I was very. Um, I don't. What's the right word? I mean, I was very um, focused and like on on watching it. Like I did enjoy it. Looks like Wad Zombie did not enjoy the background music, though. You know, I don't even hear music when I work out anymore. So, like, I must have something that just blocks that out. Mm. I'll tell you the part I actually didn't like, which was actually both of your favorite parts. <laughs> I didn't like the intro. I didn't think that was my favorite part. Okay. I think it was going to be Charlie's. Okay. I just, that, I didn't like that part. I understand why they did it, but to me, I was just like, we're just putting on, we're putting on a show, which is, was the intent. But I just, it just kind of felt icky to me. Well, you got to let people who don't know her know what she does in life. I heard somebody say that it was it was kind of a representation of her like unloading her baggage. Sure. Okay. All right. Because she gets in the mm. trunk of the car to pull out the suitcases and mm. yeah. But there were my guess is the people making that had a different idea in mind. Like didn't even notice. He's like, "What? There were suitcases? What are you talking about?" <laughs> I didn't know there was a car there. <laughs> you didn't notice that. You tune out music. I tune out things and spaces. Uh, Wad Zombie says, I love the documentary, especially the childhood part. If you have kids, you can understand how heartbreaking that is. Mm -hmm. I also found it to be very brave um, of Danielle's mom to be so upfront and so open with everything. Chris G with a hard pass. Where do you, Chris, what are you yeah. giving a hard pass to? The Jeff's workout? Or the documentary. Or the documentary. Well, and I don't I don't think they said this in the documentary, but her mom's now a counselor. 
like, like she a, flipped, like she's flipped full yeah. circle. Okay. So yeah, yeah but, what, what Jay Birch has put in the comments is Josh Bridges' new mm -hmm. um, program today's workout. <laughs> she can do that for his third workout for today. Bench in there, I'm definitely signing up for this thing. <laughs> I didn't know her mom was a swimmer. That was kind of fun for me. Yeah. To know that. And and she's been following us for years. Mm -hmm. Like, and I've chatted with her in DMs before. Yeah. Um, and she's super, like Wad Zombie said, she's super nice. Mm -hmm. We met her at um what she waiting on? Coops at that party. She was there. Okay. You know what I'm talking about at the games. Yeah. Yeah. We could have had her on for Mother's Day. See? We could have. Next year. So. Uh, that's this mm -hmm. year coming up. This year we already have somebody. We do? You, Big Mama. <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> you know what I sent him? The gif of, um, from the nutty professor of the kid eating all the food. <laughs> Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> okay, sorry, oh. getting on track. Back to um, Corey says, once you've hit rock bottom, you tend to be nice to everyone you meet. Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Well, um, yeah, a child should only feel unconditional love from their parents. And to have anything other than that just makes me sad. When she said that those things were her normal life to her, just broke me. Mm -hmm. Well, that is why, um, I mean, there's so much in um, like the educational field and healthcare now and all that where um, trainers are um, trained on trauma. So being trauma informed um, on how to respond in situations um, because there's so much that trauma can create um, in, in someone's makeup, right? So that um, it's better for educators and healthcare workers to be prepared on how best to support and um, help people. So my last question about this is really for like you and Jay Birch who are in the education world. Okay. The fact that she had a teacher that cared enough to, that got her into CrossFit and then saw this like stack of scholarships coming in and she didn't know what that meant or, or what that could do for her and mm -hmm. sat her down and talked to her about the opportunities. How did that make you feel about the profession you're in? I mean, I totally, I get it. I don't want to say like, I think there are many educators. I mean, we're in the field of education because mostly because of a passion for helping people. Um, it's not necessarily because, oh, I want to make a lot of money, right? Like there's a reason why people choose to be in the education field. And so I'm not trying to diminish in any, in any way taking from him, but I get it, right? I think that many of us, many educators would, um, yeah. would you know, do similar things to support um, kids and people that not only do we struggle, but also that we, you know, we want to help um, to continue to excel. Jay Birch gives you a true. Um, so, okay. I just wanted your perspective on that. Yeah. Because I thought that was a really cool part of the story. I do. I, I definitely. And I love that they, that he's still a part of our journey, right? Like how he's watching the games and um, all those things. So. So on to something different. Um, at, at the open, we had this Taylor versus the world, which universally has become like probably the best thing in the open um, to get excitement. And they really lucked out with Taylor willing to give himself up for everything and good competitions every week. So the, it was close. Like the one was a tie. Mm -hmm. The one was, they both broke like world records at the time, right? Great stuff. Well, it came out last week, I believe it was that fee has been invited to do the same thing for the women in quarterfinals mm. and go up against one of J.R. Howell's athletes at Crash um, for the quarterfinals. 
and she agreed to it on the show. I've not seen any updates to that, but what are your thoughts about adding a female version of this uh, to the docket? Yeah, great. I think it would. I think it would be exciting. I think if he would. I mean, she did phenomenal in the open. Um, that I think it would be. I think it would be great. I think it'd be good for her training. Too yeah. honestly, did you see the Colton Mertens video that he made yesterday while he's cutting potatoes? I did. <laughs> that was fantastic. Talking smack about about quarterfinals. He he has become the Charlie Odie of of the CrossFit space. Mm -hmm. Cold Mertens has become the Charlie Ode of the CrossFit space. Talking smack to everybody. Yeah. Yeah, he should be. He deserves to. You got to have a guy. He's not villain enough. But it's it's it is quick-witted enough. Yeah. To to make it good. And look at the popularity of like the sponsorships going up for him. Yeah. Like he's becoming that guy on the men's side that is becoming popular without having to win. And he has some home runs that he's going to win events. Right. Yeah. I think it's awesome. And the more people we have doing that, the more interest will be peaked into the sport overall. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, yeah, I'm excited. I think it will be good. Yeah. And I love, yeah, I love the, that this is confidence building for um, for Colton. And I think it can be confidence building for Fee, too. I think, I think that she could use more confidence. Yeah. Yeah, I think exposure i mean this yeah. whole thing is is really good for everybody involved yeah and she's just so darn sweet <laughs> she like is like that, that i love watching her like i i just she's like joyful to watch because she's like working really hard but i you can also see that she i think there's joy to her when she's working out too it's still fun it's yeah not a grind a job right yeah. I think she went on in that episode to talk about how she had to get to a place in her life where that didn't define her. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and she talked about, she had some really rough patches in college. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think she's just flat out awesome. I'm glad she got picked. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. So super stoked for that. Um, on the other things going on, let me see. So I'm actually going to go up to Michigan to film Jamie on quarterfinals Okay. live. Uh, we're going to do their, she started that versus series mm -hmm. with the 18 year old, the 67 year old and her doing the mm -hmm. workouts. Yeah. We're all doing quarterfinals together. So we're just going to keep going through that to show the differences between the three. Um, so that'll be fun. So pause on that. Um, speaking of the invites came out yesterday for quarterfinals. Um, so here's the part that I was confused on. So, um, if you qualify for more than one division, okay, you can sign up for both divisions. You only have to pay once. Okay. Is there, is it just comparing you on both leaderboards? Like, are they the same weights and same workouts? Okay. So it's not like you choose. It's just like, we'll compare you on here and we'll compare you on here. So if you are 54 or under. Yeah. Yeah. Then everything is the same. It goes the same weekend mm -hmm. and you just do the workout and you'll be placed on both leaderboards. Yeah. Yep. So you'll be on the open and the 45 to 49. That's it. I am. Mm -hmm. yeah. 40, 45. So, yeah, I actually like that move that you can compete in both. Mm -hmm. um, 
I am surprised I don't have to pay for both. You're surprised you don't have to pay for both? Yes. Well, I'm not doing more than. Listen, Thanks, Watt Zombie. Crossfitty type thing to do. But at least it's. This is, I mean, you're not doing more than one set of workouts. They don't care. Just, I mean, they can, it was the same with the open. They compared you for both leaderboards for the open. Yeah. So. Well, and this weekend, or actually tomorrow, we get the team workouts, mm -hmm. which will be our first indicator because usually one of those workouts is very similar to the individuals. Mm -hmm. So it'll be our first peek into that. And we'll finally get to know like who's on freaking teams. Yeah. And then that will give us something to talk about. Right. Because then at that point it becomes official, I believe. I have something non-CrossFitty we can talk about when we're done talking CrossFit. Okay. Um, the last thing I have I think um, is, did you guys see the Hiller video with Sporty Beth? Yes. Another one. Yes. Where she said the CrossFit community sucks. Yes. Yes. I just have one general statement I need to make about that. Uh huh. I'll make one too. In 2020, CrossFit made a documentary on Sporty Beth. Yes. Came out two weeks before mine. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason I know. Yep. With that, she gained so much popularity that she started her own YouTube channel that blew up. Mm -hmm. Because of the CrossFit community. And now she's just spent the last year bashing the community that lifted her up to where she is today. Mm -hmm. That sucks. The comment I'm going to make about it is I find all of her stuff to be seriously negative. Like everything feels like you should, you should, this is why that is terrible. You should do this. It's very, um, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's like, it's almost like, you know, I'm, I'm better. I know better. You should do, you should do it this way. Right. Like, I, I think it comes off. I know that like, she's trying to be the opposite. Like she's trying to say, I want to, you know, show positivity and the, the bigger bodied athlete and all this, but everything that's coming out is so negative about everything about the United States, about the games, about the CrossFit community. I mean, when I, I think your message gets lost because of her attitude is what I'm saying. Yeah. When I said this in my original riff, you know, some people love Savon. Some people hate Savon. Mm -hmm. He filmed that first. He's the one that approved yeah. that first documentary. And mm -hmm. then she goes on to say he's the most toxic man in CrossFit. Mm -hmm. Like everything that got her to where she was, she has shit on. Mm -hmm. And I find that repulsive. Mm -hmm. don't take advantage of it if you truly feel that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's just what, yeah, I think definitely just way too negative for, for me. And I think that there's enough negativity out there like that. That's not something I'm choosing to consume. Does that's she say why she hates the community? Well, she said that like she goes into gyms and people make fun of you and like, I'm a bigger bodied athlete. Mm -hmm. I have never, ever been made fun of because of that walking into a CrossFit gym. Yeah. And for work, I've traveled all over the country. Yeah. And that has never once happened to me. Like, yeah. I think she claims, I, think I don't even is. think she's experienced. Like I think I, she makes it up in her head. I think, yeah. I mean, I'm absolutely sure that there are tons of negative comments on chat boards or things like that, or, you know, in your social media posts, I'm sure there is a ton of negativity there, right? Because it, everybody feels, you know, behind a keyboard, we've, you know, you got a little, your balls are a little bigger, right? You can say things that you want to say. Um, but I don't, I've never witnessed or had any of that experience in anything 
in, in a CrossFit gym either in the community. I think she even said like it's worse in the United States though, Jay yeah. Birch. Yeah. I feel like it's a, it's a, will work. I think she's trying to click bait. This, this is the angle I'm going to take now. I'm just going to, everything is. Yeah. Everything stinks. Everybody hates me. So, yes. Yeah, so we have a choice too. We have a choice to not consume her content and that's. Well, then you're at a hole for not. If that's Sure. That's okay. That's um, I can own my choices. So I, I like Holly followed her way back. Uh huh. I couldn't take it. Like it just was too. So I unsubscribed. I don't watch her content anymore. Mm hmm. I don't know. She may even block me. I don't even know. But yeah. all right. So what, what do you have, Amy? Next Monday here where we're located is a um, pretty good location to see the eclipse. If do it doesn't, if it's not cloudy. Do you have your glasses just in case? No. You're going to burn your retinas. What? For the I, the last seconds. time I didn't even, like, what, what, what's it happened a few years ago, right? Like five years ago? Yeah, this, but that was a different eclipse. It got dark. <laughs> That's all I know. And it was cool that it got dark in the middle of the day. See? People are going to be driving. Traffic is going to be so backed up. What are we getting out of seeing this? Look, you know that schools are closed. Yes, it's a problem for me. It's well, it is a problem for you. Listen, Luckily, they're going to pull schools out now for this dumb tornado that's coming. They did. Did they close? In Dayton, it did. Well, and Tangie's closing early. Yes, it is once in a lifetime. Thanks, Andrew. Why won't people watch a tornado? I'll watch a tornado on a screen it's a natural in the movie thing. Twister, not a natural occurring thing like an eclipse. <laughs> Listen, it's going to be cool. Okay. Cicadas are once in a lifetime too, but you don't go chasing cool. cicadas. Cicadas are cool. They're loud. They're ugly. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't avoid them. But I am going to. I'm not closed either, Birch. Um, but I'm going to. I this. I'm going to choose to consume this content. I'm going to choose to consume the eclipse content with my special glasses, and I'll send you a photo. Um. So one that. other thing that's not CrossFit content. Okay. There was content that I consumed mm -hmm. the Iowa LSU game yes. in tournament last night. Hot. Yeah, so I am, I am so sucked into the women's tournament this year. I've watched more women's games than men's. It's so much better. hundred percent. Both games were great last night. You know what? I wonder what Corey will think. I wonder if Corey's an LSU fan. I don't know. But, Maybe. But my my people at my house are not big LSU fans. They are haters. No. I just was, I was bummed for Angel Reese uh, with the ankle. Yeah, that's things. Because she was dominating. Yeah, but not like Caitlin Clark. Yeah, like Caitlin Clark. No, she not. was dominating. <laughs> not just Caitlin Clark. Like they're, they're like the two best. They are women's basketball. Yeah. And it would have been Haley was getting destroyed. Is what the problem was. Mm -hmm. so, but it was a great game. And I hope I hope Caitlin wins. Yeah. The, I tell you what, the next game is going to be great also because South Carolina is the best Paige team. Paige Buckets. Buckets. Is that her real name? No, it's Bukers. Okay. <laughs> She's just as good as Caitlin, but people forget because she tore ACL. 
She's great. Mm. All these newy fans. I'm I'm a newy fan. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, Paige is the real deal. But I got sucked in, and now I really enjoy it. Yeah, you're one of those. You're one of those Matt Fraser guys. I'm a rich guy. I've been here for a long time. <laughs> If we're talking CrossFit, I'm a rich guy. <laughs> yeah. But women's basketball, I, really still I'm, just I'm a, a poor guy. All this, Madaris is the greatest ever. You shut your mouth. Hmm. And and my Pirates are 5-0. and oh. Okay, you talk about. Yeah, that's not a good sport. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually watched four that. baseball games this weekend. Shut the season down. I uh, know. <laughs> Only a matter of time. Yeah. Mm. Their pitching staff looks good, man. Fawn Doll is here. <laughs> no. What else? Amy is so easily amused about the names. Oh, yeah. Uh, also, next week is WrestleMania. Let's just not get out of hand here without acknowledging. Mm. What What do you want us to talk about it? Like, What do you want to tell I'm us? let you know, Amy. Be prepared. <laughs> Greatest WrestleMania ever coming. I could probably do pretty well at WrestleMania now because since I'm a... Um, well, I don't know. And you know I, have, heal, right? I got more mass. Heal? I'm saying because I have more mass on me. I would probably do mm. so, you know, better job on some body slams. and King Kong so, Amy coming <laughs> from the top rope. <laughs> With the splash. Hmm. Yeah. So the rock's a heel not right now. Yes, and he's fantastic at being a heel. Well, that's how we—that's what he was when he first came up. Yes, then he got good. And now he's bad again, but he still gets cheered in certain cities. Mm-hmm. Well, because his, like his, whatever repertoire, the shtick, and the I don't care what. You know, it doesn't matter what you think. Like, oh, that was from the bad day. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, and then he just carried it over, and then everybody thought it was cool when he was a good guy. But But now he talks about fans having things, diseases and such. (laughs) Like, that's his his Hey, he just likes to yell at the crowd. Hmm. Yeah, it's good. Uh, so, have you been have you been watching consistently? Like, you have young boys, so that's they're not allowed to watch. Apparent, allegedly, according to the world outside, they don't watch it. But when their moms are here, so with Vince stepping down and The Rock jumping in. Is uh, is is the storyline? Are the storylines getting back to like the old days? Yes, because Triple H is the one that actually. Yeah, it's like a soap opera. It's like it doesn't matter how long you've been gone; you can just jump in at any moment. No, they got some down points. There's (laughs) nobody good, and you're like, watch. Yeah, that's where they lost me. Like the storylines got really bad. Yeah, but if they're back to what they were, I might have to like. Take a peek in again. Take a, take a look at WrestleMania. The women are good, like women's basketball. These women are good, and not just hey, we're in bikinis. Now that Vince no. is on, there's no more sex slaves in the no. WWE. No, that was that was not a great, not a great <laughs> look for old Vince or Brock Lesnar, really. That is that is the truth, Jeff. That um, Triple H is running the show now. Yes. And Andrew says storylines are great right now. Yep. Look at this. I think that you're making a comeback for it. I'm telling you, it's it's good. Mm-hmm. It's not 96, but it's getting it's good. 96. You were in high school then. What were you still doing watching it in high school? Because it was awesome. I was <laughs> watching in 96, and I was in working a full time job. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Nerds. 96, you were big back then too, Amy. What are you talking about? Oh no. Hey, you, I've seen pictures. 
<laughs> so what's on a what's on a better trajectory wwe or women's basketball oh women's basketball of yeah agreed yep do you, think, do you think this will translate to the wnba when no when Angel reese and caitlin go to the wnba no no i mean it'll help it but it won't be as big as College. I think it was a B. Wow. Okay. Their playoffs will do well. Their regular season. I mean, NBA's regular season's garbage. <laughs> I still watch it, but it's hard to watch. Okay. It helps that there are no men's college players that you know. Edie, maybe, because he's seven foot 100. Do you think NIL will change that? For who? Men's. It'll make it worse. Well, they won't need to jump to the NBA because they're making money. Whose computer keeps making that sound? Because you still got to, it's probably mine, you still got to uh, go to school if you go to school. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know that this year in the NFL draft is the lowest number of underclassmen. And they're attributing it to the NIL because they can make money in college, so they can be patient. They can also just go wherever they want every year, basically. Mm. Sucks. All right. Well, with that, we fit our we fit our forty five minutes, and I've got a meeting to get to. All right, yo. So with that. Glad you could all be here on this slow CrossFit News week. Uh, but we we filled the space with other stuff. We did. So maybe next week we'll talk uh, the results of WrestleMania and some team stuff. Acknowledge him. Tribal Chief. What? <laughs> You're talking about wrestling. It's fine. Keep okay. moving. <laughs> all right. With that, thank you, everybody, in the chat. We love you all, and we'll see everybody next time on Clydesdale Media Roundtable. Bye, guys.